My name is San Jacob Tai. I'm a cardiologist in York today. Um, I wanted to talk to you about something that often creates a great deal of anxiety when it is usually incidentally picked up on a heart scan. And that condition is aneurysmal dilatation of the ascending aorta. So the typical scenario is, let's say you go to your doctor, the doctor hears a murmur or says, oh, I think you've got you know, I think uh, you're breathless, let's do a blood test, and the blood test comes back abnormal. And then the doctor refers you for an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. Now, when you have the ultrasound of the heart, sometimes what happens is the cause for which you went to the doctor may be completely, there may not be an underlying cause found, either the scan may be normal, but incidentally, they find that your ascending aorta is a little bit dilated and the report comes back and says, oh, there is some aneurysmal dilatation of the ascending aorta, which is an incidental finding, not the cause of your symptoms, uh, because this is a condition that rarely causes symptoms unless it is very severe. Uh, but when you read that report, it can be very scary. It's a phrase that sounds frightening. It conjures up images of something bulging, fragile and on the verge of bursting and certainly if you go on google to look it up you'll see you'll hear all these horror stories which will scare you uh, and a lot of patients who come to me say well i went just incidentally to have a scan they've reported this and now i feel like i'm living with a ticking time bomb inside my chest because if this thing is enlarged is there a possibility it could burst or tear so I thought I'd do a video on it. So let's take a deep breath together and try and unpack this, okay? The first thing we've got to try and work out is what exactly is the ascending aorta? Now, basically what you have is you have the heart and the heart has to pump blood out. It pumps blood out into this big muscular tube called the aorta. And the way that aorta is, is here's your heart, the aorta comes out like this and it'll send out little branches to the head and neck. And then it arches like this, it comes round like this in the chest, and then it goes down and it supplies the legs, the kidneys, etc. So the bit that is coming out of the heart is called the ascending bit. Then you have the arch here, and then you have the descending bit. So the ascending aorta is the first portion of the aorta. Okay. And it rises up from the heart before curving into the aortic arch. So we're talking about just this bit here before the arch. Now, when we say aneurysmal dilatation, we are talking about a widening of this section. We're not necessarily talking about an aneurysm, i.e. that there's something really just bulging away and ready to burst. It just means that there's a widening, okay? Or an enlargement beyond what we'd consider normal. A normal ascending aorta is about 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters in diameter. It is true to say that the measurement has to be indexed to your body surface area because if you're a tall guy, you're allowed a bigger uh, aorta. If you're a small person, the aorta would generally be smaller. But in general, anything l larger than four centimeters is considered dilated. When it reaches five centimeters, we start using the word aneurysm. And beyond 5.5 centimeters, especially if it is growing rapidly, we would probably have to consider surgery to correct it because the risk of rupture is greater. So why does this happen? There are several possible causes. By far and away, hypertension is a common culprit. You know, high blood pressure places chronic stress on the aortic valve, aortic wall. Some people are born with something called a bicuspid aortic valve, a congenital condition, very common. 1% of the population have a bicuspid aortic valve. And this is often associated with dilatation of the aorta. So a common theme may be that a person hears a murmur in a young person, they go, they're found to have a bicuspid aortic valve, and the report may say, and the aortic root or the ascending aorta is dilated. There are other connective tissue disorders. By far and away, the most important of these is Marfan syndrome, but there's others, Lewis-Dietz or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, 
where the structural scaffolding of the blood vessels is inherently more fragile and that means that the vessel is more prone to dilating. Aging, family history, smoking, they all also contribute. But here's the key. Not all aortic enlargements are equal and not all are dangerous. Understandably, many people worry that an enlarged aorta is a prelude to rupture or dissection, tearing. And yes, those risks do exist, but they are generally low when the aorta is below 5 centimeters and not growing rapidly. The real risk increases with size, so if it's above 5 centimeters and particularly above 5.5 centimeters, then that is certainly more risky. And also the rate of growth. So if the dilatation is growing, is increasing more than 0.5 centimeters per year, that is concerning. And in particular, if it is associated with a connective tissue disorder or Marfan syndrome, then that is a worry because those patients are more prone to developing complications, ruptures, etc. And also family history is very important. If there's a family history of aortic dissection, ruptured aortas, etc., then that obviously has to be taken very seriously. But most people have only mild to moderate dilatations and they generally go on and live completely full lives with monitoring and medical treatment. So what can be done about this? Well, the most important thing is surveillance, regular imaging, usually yearly or every six months, um, depending on the size. Uh, and this could be done using an echocardiogram, an ultrasound, or a CT scan, or an MRI scan. It's usually best to use the same modality every time, rather than, so you don't want to have an echo one time, and then a CT the next year, etc. You'd rather do it with the same modality, because you want to compare apples with apples to see if there is progression. I think blood pressure control is very important uh, and often we would prescribe beta blockers or angiotensin receptor blockers to reduce the stress on the aortic valve because any stress on the wall is more likely to make this thing grow and dilate further. In terms of lifestyle, it's a good idea to avoid heavy lifting, straining and situations that spike the blood pressure. Obviously, if this dilatation is progressive, growing by more than 0.5 centimeters per year, or certainly if the absolute value is more than 5.5 centimeters, and if there is a genetic condition like Marfan's, or if you're already undergoing heart surgery for another reason, then that threshold is even um, lower, you know, uh, then uh, surgery is often needed. So, if I have no underlying conditions, I don't have Marfan syndrome, I don't have connective tissue disorder, then if I have something which, an aorta which is more than 5.5, then that would require a surgical referral. If we found that it was growing progressively, you know, growing aggressively, so dilating by more than 0.5 centimeters per year, then we would probably have a low threshold for referring for surgery. Uh, and certainly if the aorta was dilated not to 5.5 but perhaps 4.5 and above and the patient was going to go and have surgery for another reason or they have a genetic condition like Marfan's then they would probably have that replaced at that point. I want to pause and speak directly to the emotional burden that this diagnosis can bring uh, being told your aorta is enlarged can make you hyper aware of every chest ache or flutter and it's easy to catastrophize. But in truth, many people live for years, even decades, with stable aortic dilatation, never requiring surgery. So you are not a walking time bomb, even though, you know, sometimes when you go online, that's how you end up feeling. You're a person with a condition that can be monitored managed and in most cases peacefully coexisted with. So knowledge is power but so is perspective. Now if you have just received this diagnosis please don't panic. Get informed, work with your doctor, keep your blood pressure in check, live your life to the full not fearfully and just ensure that you have uh, 
a plan for regular surveillance. All right. I hope this helped bring some clarity and comfort. And if you find this video useful, then please do share it with someone who might benefit. And as always, thank you once again for watching. All the best.